on May 1st on the Wuxian Expressway in Huizhou, Guangdong, an EV on a flatbed truck carrying BYD electric cars spontaneously combusted, igniting all the new vehicles on board and sending up thick smoke. Less than a month earlier, a similar incident involving a BYD electric car spontaneously combusting occurred in Hubei. Furthermore, last month, four BYD dealerships were destroyed by fire and incidents of BYD vehicles catching fire have been frequently reported nationwide. In recent years, China has seen an increase in incidents of electric vehicles spontaneously combusting and failures in autonomous driving systems, with electric vehicles on fire becoming common sight on roads across the country. On May 2nd in Harbin, a Gili Borui spontaneously caught fire. Bystanders appeared unconcerned, and the vehicle owner did not attempt to extinguish the flames. No one even called to report the emergency. It seems that as long as there are no injuries, the fire department does not respond urgently to such incidents involving burning electric vehicles. This kind of event has become so routine that it no longer surprises anyone. Charging electric vehicles presents a significant challenge, particularly evident during the May Day holiday in China when travel surges led to congested roads. The shortage of charging stations forced many drivers to endure long queues at highway service areas, with some waiting for hours to charge their vehicles. The scarcity of available charging options even sparked conflicts among drivers competing for access to these stations. In recent years, the popularity of EVs has increased significantly, with more and more people choosing to buy them. Despite initial skepticism, the ridicule when EVs were first introduced to the market they have quickly become a dark horse in China's automotive industry. It rapidly gained popularity and overtook traditional vehicles in a remarkable short time, a phenomenon that is quite rare in the automotive sector. Compared to traditional gasoline vehicles, EVs, which use batteries as their power source, offer a cleaner, more environmentally friendly, and energy-efficient mode of transportation. In recent years, the development of EVs in China has been rapid, continually increasing their market share and squeezing the living space of traditional gasoline vehicles. Many owners are boldly predicting that traditional gasoline vehicles will soon be phased out due to the growing strength of EV manufacturers. However, some owners still believe in the superiority of gasoline vehicles, stating that as long as gasoline vehicles remain on the market, they will not switch to EVs. The first batch of NEO ES8 Founders Edition electric vehicles which were initially highly anticipated in China, are now in a situation that is clear for all to see. As one of the first owners of a new EV, I have a few points to share today. As pioneers, we've taken a hit, like losing teeth and swallowing them with a pain that can't be expressed. What happened with the car? The air suspension system, which cost several hundred thousand yuan, has completely failed, and now the car can't even move. Just two years ago, Two of the air suspensions were already replaced. I consulted a 4S shop and they quoted around 10,000 yuan for each unit, suggesting a total replacement of the subframe, which was very expensive. I then spoke to a specialist in Guangdong who repairs air suspensions. He said he could do the replacement, but I'd need to bring the car to him. As someone from Hunan, it's impractical for me to drive to Guangdong for a repair, right? So, I bought two airbags from him and installed them myself. That fixed it for a while, but here's the problem. If you buy these air suspension parts externally, they don't match because the original manufacturer locks the system. It needs a program decoding, which means any external parts you get, whether OEM or not, are not recognized. Only parts from the 4S shop are recognized, and you must use their official computer system to match them. It's like a kind of decoding process, just yesterday morning, as I was driving, the air suspension failed again. Now I'm really in a bind because the air isn't pumping up anymore. Meanwhile, gasoline vehicles have undergone years of refinement and integration, possessing qualities that EVs have yet to replace. EV owners face the daunting prospect of needing to replace batteries, which raises the question, is it worth a replacement? Many electric vehicles have battery costs ranging from 80,000 to 150,000 yuan, not including labor costs. For instance, the Tesla Model 3, priced at 270,000 yuan, 
requires nearly 160,000 yuan for a battery replacement, which is equivalent to the price of a new Honda Accord. The BYD Han starts at 170,000 yuan, but replacing its blade battery costs 140,000 yuan, nearly the price of a new car. The Ito M5 uses a lithium iron phosphate battery from CATL, which costs around 60,000 yuan. However, replacement costs are above 100,000 yuan, which could alternatively buy a Toyota Corolla or a Nissan Silphi. Some argue that EVs have their advantages, such as low operating costs. A single charge can cover several hundred kilometers, costing about 0.2 yuan per kilometer, which is highly economical and a major reason why many consumers opt for EVs. However, if one calculates carefully, it turns out to be more cost effective to own a gasoline vehicle if driving less than 10,000 kilometers per year. The yearly fuel cost is insignificant for a typical family car driving less than 10,000 kilometers annually. With current fuel prices, filling a 50 liter tank with 92 octane gasoline costs about 400 yuan. Based on daily usage, after purchasing a car, if it is driven less than 10,000 kilometers in a year, refilling the tank once a month is sufficient. The annual fuel expense is approximately 5,000 to 6,000 yuan. For some fuel efficient family cars, the fuel cost can even be reduced to below 5,000 yuan. Next, let's calculate the cost of using an electric vehicle. The primary daily expense is the cost of charging. According to current electricity rates, the charging cost per 100 kilometers for an electric vehicle may be around 17 to 27 yuan. Assuming a cost of 20 yuan, the cost per kilometer is 0.2 yuan. Driving 10,000 kilometers would require 2,000 yuan in electricity costs, which is 3,000 yuan less than the cost of a fuel vehicle over a year. While EVs have lower operating costs, battery replacement is costly and depreciation rates are high. A new vehicle can lose half its value by the second year, a stark contrast to the better value retention of a traditional gasoline vehicle. If a vehicle is used for 10 years, with each year accumulating 10,000 kilometers, the total refueling cost for a gasoline vehicle would be about 50,000 yuan, compared to about 20,000 yuan for an electric vehicle, a significant difference. However, the depreciation of EVs is steep with a 60% loss in value over three years, making the prospect of selling the vehicle after 10 years rather daunting. Additionally, the cost of accident repairs for electric vehicles can be exorbitantly high. Recently, Mr. Huang, an owner of a Polestar 2, experienced an accident while driving. His vehicle scraped against the side of a mountain, causing damage to the Polestar 2's headlights and chassis and indenting the battery panel. What frustrated Mr. Huang was that the repair estimate provided by the dealership was a staggering 540,000 yuan, despite the car's purchasing price being less than 300,000 yuan. The cost for repairing the front end and headlights was over 90,000 yuan, and replacing the entire battery pack in the chassis amounted to more than 400,000 yuan. Including labor costs, the repair expenses for this Polestar 2 nearly equaled the price of two new cars. In 2023, halfway through the year, China exported over 1 million vehicles, surpassing Japan's 954,000 vehicles and became the world's largest automobile exporter for the first time, with EVs accounting for a quarter of this volume and a year-over-year -year increase of over 100%. In just five years, China shifted from being the world's largest automobile importer to the largest exporter. However, a closer look reveals that China leads an export volume, not revenue, where Germany remains the leader. Tesla, manufactured in China, accounts for nearly 40% of the EV export share, while BYD, the most exported Chinese brand, accounts for only 17%, mostly consistent of entry-level A0-class vehicles. The awakening of China's electric vehicle industry can be traced back to 2008 when Elon Musk became the CEO of Tesla and launched its first car. Shortly thereafter, China decided to support this industry providing purchase subsidies and tax exemptions from 2010. In cities like Beijing and Shanghai, 
where car ownership is restricted, electric vehicles were initially exempt from these limitations. Over 10 years, China invested nearly 150 billion yuan in the industry, attracting passionate investments from businesses and capital. Suddenly, consumers in China, first and second tier cities, found that domestic EVs dominated prime locations in shopping malls. In just five years, sales increased 40 fold to 303,000 units, leading the world for the first time. Eight years later, sales increased another 20 fold, though not without costs. Shortly after China became the world's largest EV market in 2016, an official inspection revealed. That 72 companies had fraudulently claimed over 9 billion yuan in government subsidies for EVs, nearly one third of the total 33 billion yuan subsidized at the time. With the support of the Chinese government policies and through subsidies for industrial upgrading, the government's market involvement has led to opposition from trade partners. The U.S. China trade war that began in 2018 was largely fueled. By opposition to China's Made in China 2025 plan, which included EVs among its top 10 industries. After the EU emerged as a major market for Chinese EVs, France launched an anti dumping and anti subsidy investigation against them. Many people believe that China has overtaken other countries in the automotive sector, with some even venerating Chinese electric vehicles to the extent of entrusting their family safety to these cars. There are even extreme cases where drivers of EVs engage in reckless behavior. A driver of a Li auto vehicle left a driver's seat while the vehicle operated in driverless mode at a high speeds. There was even a child in the passenger seat not wearing a seatbelt, and the driver filmed the video to boast about it. The blossoming of China's domestic electric vehicle industry today is largely due to Tesla's open source technology. In June 2014, Elon Musk announced on Tesla's official website that all of Tesla's patents, including those related to the Core 3 electric system, would be made public. Of the patents Tesla opened, only nine were for designs, with the remaining 213 being technical patents, many of which are core to the technology. The top 10 Tesla patents have been cited at least 140 times each, even by major corporations like Samsung. BMW and General Electric. In 2023, Musk announced that the first electric car model from Tesla would be open sourced, with all files from design to engineering and research available for download from Tesla's official website. This has led to increasingly fierce competition in the EV market. To gain market share, the Chinese automotive market has seen large scale price wars and rising industry tensions. With the profitable gasoline vehicle sector shrinking and the EV market generally in a state of profit decline or loss. For instance, in 2023, Xpeng Motors reported a net loss of 10.4 billion yuan, an increase of 13.6% from the previous year. NIO reported a net loss of 20.7 billion yuan, with cumulative losses over the past six years exceeding 86 billion yuan. And Leap Motor reported a net loss of over 4 billion yuan, following a net loss of more than 5 billion yuan the previous year. Together, these three companies reported a total loss of 35.3 billion yuan in 2023. Additionally, Ceres, a vehicle manufacturer collaborating with Huawei, disclosed in its 2023 annual report a net loss of 2.45 billion yuan. With the non GAAP net losses reaching over 4.8 billion yuan. Financial reports reveal that Ceres experienced a net loss of 1.8 billion yuan in 2021, which increased to 3.8 billion yuan in 2022. Cumulatively, over three years, including 2023, the company's total losses have exceeded 8.1 billion yuan. According to a report by China Business Network, The China Association of Automobile Manufacturers (CAAM) forecasts that sales of EVs in China will reach approximately 11.5 million units in 2024. Despite the rapid development of EVs, the market is undergoing continuous consolidation. The number of emerging automakers gradually increased around 2014, followed by capital infusion. However, as competition intensified in recent years. Many new automakers have fallen, 
and the capital market has begun to become more rational. Meanwhile, most EV automakers are operating at a loss, with only a few like BYD and Li Auto achieving profitability. Honorary Chairman of the China Society of Automotive Engineers, Fu Yu Wu, stated that the full marketization of EVs will further promote corporate mergers and restructuring. Over the past year, traditional gasoline vehicles have engaged in price wars with EVs, not only accelerating the replacement of gasoline vehicles. But also further driving the industry towards consolidation around leading enterprises. Fu Yu Wu noted that a few automakers, such as BYD and GAC Ion, have leveraged their advantages in scale and platform, while companies like Li Auto have achieved profitability through precise product positioning and scale advantages. But most companies face significant profit pressures. Currently, mainland China's automotive production capacity. Significantly exceeds demand. Within the EV sector, it is reported that 15 emerging automakers, including WM Motor, Enovate, Singulato Motors, and Iways Automobiles, all of which have either declared bankruptcy or are in operational crises, had planned a total annual production capacity of over 10 million vehicles. These plans involve investments totaling more than 600 billion yuan. However, the actual operational capacity currently stands at nearly 3.8 million vehicles annually. Chairman of Chang'an Automobile Zhu Huarong believes that due to the ongoing decrease in raw material prices, there is further room for cost reduction in EVs. The industry's Matthew effect is becoming more pronounced, with natural selection accelerating and industry concentration increasing. It is expected that the top 10 automakers will occupy nearly 85% of the market share in 2024, with 80% of brands seizing operations in the coming years. Electric vehicles have deceived all of us. They claim to be eco-friendly and cost-saving, but in reality, they're just a money pit. Everyone overlooks many flaws, so you have to give credit to the marketing team. The marketing is done well, but the product itself, first and foremost, is about battery range. The manufacturers boast numbers that sound great—400, 500, and even 600 kilometers, making it sound like you could drive to the moon. In reality, if you achieve 70% of that range, that's pretty good. Most of the time, you're worrying about where the next charging station is. What about the cost of replacing a battery? It could make a dent in your bank account. You might think the money saved on gas will cover it, but think again. Spending 30 or 40,000 yuan on a battery. Do you think you're in a video game where you can just keep generating coins? Don't forget, over time, the battery will just turn into a decorative brick. Let's talk about the so-called 3D system warranty. Does that warranty policy sound reliable to you? When you encounter a problem, that warranty might be less substantial than toilet paper. Once your beloved car becomes a second-hand vehicle, or if you accidentally service it at an unofficial location, the manufacturer's warranty becomes as elusive as the moon reflected on the water. The charging issue is another major headache. Although charging an electric car is supposed to be economical, finding a charging station can sometimes be harder than finding a romantic partner. Once you find one, you might still have to wait in line for a long time, making you miss the smell of gas stations. The most disheartening aspect is the depreciation rate of the electric vehicles, which is like the winter sun. It looks warm, but it's practically useless. When you decide to sell your car and buy a new one. You'll find that its value has plummeted faster than your heart drops on a roller coaster. So, brothers and sisters, don't easily fall into the trap of electric cars unless you have the financial ability. Honestly, in some respects, traditional gasoline cars are much more reliable. Don't just follow the hype. Do your research and think, and don't let your wallet follow your emotions.